Uh, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Patricia Jamison. I know many of you who are here today. And I am the past president <laughs> of the League of Women Voters of Queen Anne's County. Thank you for participating in tonight's forum for candidates running for the two vacancies on the Centerville Town Council. Uh, the forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Queen Anne's County in collaboration with Queen Anne Queen Anne's County TV, and we're so lucky to have Queen Anne's County TV. Uh, the League of Women Voters was founded in 1920 to prepare women to vote after the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. The founders believed that a nonpartisan league could provide education to the public to assure the success of democracy. The Queen Anne County League has been active since about 2004. And it supports the belief that democracy works best when voters make informed decisions. We do this by holding voter registration events. And by the way, next week, September the 19th, is National Voter Registration Day. And we will have a table, just like the one that's set up back there, at Chesapeake College and at the two high schools. So we'll be doing voter registration. And, and we are at a number of the events, Juneteenth and Ken Island Day and Corsica River Day and Make a Difference Day. So we do try to get out there and um, work with the public, generally doing education because most people are registered. It's making them understand how important their vote is. Um, okay, we also have, um, of course, we have all the forums. We produce the photos guide, both online and in uh, paper format. We have a great website, and I would encourage people to take a look at it. It's lwvqac.org, and it has copies of our monthly minutes, as well as documents such as our bylaws, the voter's guide, the guide to government officials, information about voting and local elections and upcoming events. It's really a very, very nice website. And if you're interested in joining the league, you can do that online using the website. The League is a nonpartisan organization whose membership is open to anyone at least 16 years of age. Thanks to, where is Mary? She must have stepped outside in the hall. <laughs> Mary Camel, who chaired our forum committee and made certain that candidates received the invitations and information and that the press was informed of the event. A special thanks to Queen Anne's County TV, George, your group, for producing this event, and to all who are participating here in, in person. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and it's going to be live streamed by Facebook and also by our local TV channel. And a video will be produced, and it will be available on YouTube, which is, which is great. I want to thank especially the candidates for their willingness to take part in the forum and also for their willingness to support our community. I mean, these jobs are difficult jobs. <laughs> you don't get paid a whole lot, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we really appreciate your willingness to serve our community and for being part of our forum this evening. At this time, I would like to turn things over to Mrs. Liz Hammond, our league's current president. And, Lee, and Liz is also going to be moderating tonight's forum. Okay, Liz. There we go. Good evening. My name is Liz Hammond, and I'll be moderating tonight's forum. As Patricia said, this forum is being videotaped and also live streamed by QAC TV and QAC TV Facebook page and QAC.org slash live. Our forum tonight is for the Centerville Town Council. There are five members on the council, and each member is elected to a three-year term. Two of the seats are up for election this October, and there are three candidates running for office, Steve Klein and Ashley Kaiser, both incumbents seeking re-election, and Jeff Keel, a former member of the town council. The two candidates who receive the largest number of votes will win the election and will serve on the town council. Unfortunately, Ashley Kaiser is unable to 
to participate tonight due to a family commitment. The format for tonight's forum will be as outlined in your program. Each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves and give an opening statement. After the opening statements, I will ask two prepared questions that the League of Women Voters has sent to the candidates beforehand. After the candidates have answered the prepared questions, the floor will then be open to questions from the audience. We have two timers sitting in the front row with signs to give a 15 second warning and then a final stop after the allotted time is up. We ask that you please hold all your applause until the end of the forum so that we have as much time as possible for your questions and answers. Now again, please make sure all your cell phones and other devices are silenced. The forum will now begin with the candidates introducing themselves, and as we've decided to go alphabetically, um, Jeff Kuehl will answer, will introduce himself first. Gentlemen, you each have two minutes. Thank you. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for putting the forum on, first of all. My name is Jeff Kuehl. I've resided in the town of Centerville for 23 years. I am married. I have three stepchildren, six grandchildren, and two <laughs> great-grandchildren. I am currently employed as a firefighter, EMT, or EMT firefighter with Queen Anne's County Department of Emergency Services. And I also am a member of Goodwill Fire Company, currently serving as a board of director, and have also held many other positions for the past 19 years. I'm a member, currently a member of the Town Planning Commission. I previously served two years on the council, um, and that's pretty much it. Steve? Thank you. I'll echo Jeff's thanks to the League of Women Voters. Thank you for putting this on very much. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm Steve Klein. I've lived in Centerville since 2009. Uh, my wife, uh, Kim, and I decided to raise our children here, which we are doing, 10-year-old twins, Alex and Emily. I have served on the town council since 2020. When I'm not doing that, uh, I run a major regional nonprofit based in Easton. Before I started doing that, I served for about 20 years on Capitol Hill as a natural resources public policy professional. Uh, I'm originally from Baltimore County, where I uh, grew up, uh, the seventh generation of Marylander that has come from Baltimore County. Uh, I'm also an Eagle Scout, Troop 427, when I was 16 years old, something I'm still quite proud of uh, achieving. I've got a bachelor's degree from St. Mary's College and a master's degree from Johns Hopkins. Uh, both of those degrees are in political science. Uh, and I will say, um, if I'm lucky enough, fortunate enough to be reelected, this will be my final term. I do not intend to run again. Uh, so I'll make that pledge to everybody here in this room and all the voters and folks in Centerville. Uh, I appreciate your vote, and this will be it for me. I will limit myself to just two terms in the town council. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And now we will move to the prepared questions that the candidates were given previously. You have three minutes each, and the first question is, on your priority list, what are the top two actions that the town council should focus on, accomplishment, on accomplishing? And we will start with Steve. Thank you. When I ran in 2020, I was the only candidate, there were nine of us, I was the only candidate who talked about debt. We had, at the time, $17 million in debt in a town budget of about $5 million. Completely unsustainable to go on borrowing at that level. Uh, since then, I have led the council, uh, with the support of all of my fellows, uh, to reduce that debt to $12 million, a $5 million reduction in debt in three years. Uh, and that's not just because we paid our notes on time. It's because we got an aggressive repayment schedule that paid them off far before they were done. We have to keep doing that. $12 million is still too much debt for Centerville. Uh, and in my time on the council, I have opposed every single effort. Uh, there hasn't been very many, but any, every single idea to borrow money, uh, I've said no way. The town simply cannot afford it. So I think we need to keep fighting that debt battle and, and continue to be controlled in our spending, uh, continue to make investments where we have to. I think it's important because uh, you know, penny wise is often pound foolish in the long run. We've seen that. Both Jeff and I in our time on the council have seen how the cost-cutting measures of previous councils come back to cost far more in the future. Uh, my second priority would be the wastewater treatment plant, which is why I'm running again. Uh, not only do we have to get a wastewater treatment plant built for the town of Centerville, uh, it is my most sincere belief that we have to do it in a way that doesn't run into the same kind of cost overruns and unaccountability we saw 
on Commerce and Liberty Street. We cannot run the risk of that happening again, simply put. Once we get the wastewater treatment plant in the ground, we have to have in place the wastewater allocation policies. So when people come to us for the wastewater, we're not just giving it away. I don't want to be sitting here, I will not be sitting here, I don't want anybody to be sitting here in 10 or 15 or 20 years saying we need another new wastewater plant. There is a lot of growth, uh, residential growth, that's being held back in Centerville right now because we have an easy out. We have, we can say we don't have any wastewater capacity. It's very convenient. Once that plant is built, that excuse to say no, that reason to say no, goes away entirely. So we have to be really smart about how we give those allocations out uh, and really manage those allocations because they are, uh, they are finite and they have real value to the town. We have to manage them well. Those are my two priorities. Jeff? Our number one priority is to, to get funding for the wastewater treatment plant. Like Steve said, we need, we, we need a new plant and we don't, like 20 years, we don't wanna have to say we need another one. And also, we need uh, to find funding for don't say I want to take a loan out for this, but we need to find funding somewhere for our aging infrastructure, town roads. Town roads, some roads are in the town have been falling apart for many years. Some of them should have been replaced in the 80s and are still not repaired. Um, let me take, so I want to find, I want to try to find a way to do that. And I'll, we also want to find ways to preserve funding for future infrastructure projects, capital projects. Like currently right now there are six, the top six roads in the town that need to be redone. I'm talking about from water and sewer all the way to sidewalk, curb and gutter and paving. The top six, the cost is $5.6 million. And there's already 15 more roads on the list that need to be fixed or repaired or, or some sort of structural problem that they need to be repaired. So, and my number two, like Steve, I want to keep the debt down. We don't need any more debt. We, I'm, we're, we, like I said, we got it down to 12 million, along with the me when I was sitting on council and the previous council have gotten it way down, and we would like to get it really a whole lot lower than that. So continuous, continuously get the debt down. All right, gentlemen, the second question is please describe your vision of Centerville 10 to 15 years from now, and please be specific, and Jeff, your turn to go first. My plan in for 10 or 15 years is to see some more growth, not overgrowth, some more growth, more businesses. We have a lovely business park out there. We just worked on a new comprehensive plan, so all that will also allow some more growth. Um, I don't want to see... 20,000 people living in the town of Centerville, but we also need more residents in the town to, to attract businesses because most businesses are population-based businesses. So they said, all right, we're not gonna to come to Centerville because you don't have the population. I don't want all kinds of businesses in the, I don't want a Walmart or a Target or whatever in the, in the town of Centerville, but we need smart growth to, and I, hopefully we can do that in the next 10 or 15 years. Steve? Sure. First and foremost, in 10 or 15 years, this is still a place we all recognize as home. Uh, that's, that's high on my list of priorities. I moved here because of the quality of life, period. Let's protect that. Let's do all we can to protect that. Uh, I would like to see some growth in the town. I would like the majority of that growth to happen east of Route 213. So between 213 and 301. Think uh, where the high school is, south of the high school. Uh, I think. When you think about growth east of 213, you think about folks who can get home without getting on 213. They don't have to come through downtown to get home. They can take 304 where the state has invested substantial sums in a roundabout and the traffic infrastructure to get them home. I think we have a new wastewater plant that has plenty of allocations left. We haven't grown ourselves into the same kind of hole we're in now. We also have an allocation fund, and I want to I stress this. I insisted in my time on the council that we create a, an, an allocation trust fund 
So every time you build a house or connect to our sewer in Centerville, it's about 14,500 bucks. And this town has got a long history of using those allocation fees from Symphony Village, from Northbrook, to keep utility rates artificially low, and now we are paying the piper for those decisions. So this council, with the help from staff, created an allocation trust fund, so when you, if we uh, grow and you spend $14,500 on an allocation, that allocation is held in reserve only to be used for investments in the wastewater system. Imagine if we would have done that with the 400 units in Northbrook and the 400 units in Symphony Village. We would not be scrambling to pay for a new wastewater plant. We would not be sitting on 21 road and sewer projects because we would have the funding necessary to make those investments. Uh, I think you know, we, are, we, we need to protect the community feel of Centerville. I'd like to see an expanded trails network. We're working on that, this council. I know Jeff supports this as well, has invested in the trail system uh, south of, excuse me, north of Symphony Village to connect to our mill stream. We have a trails master plan I would like to see implemented as well. Uh, that is what I think the next 10 to 15 years of Centerville should look like. Thank you. And now we will move to questions from the audience. First, I would just like to ask you to identify yourself and tell us where you live before posing your question. You will have 45 seconds to ask your question, and the candidates will have one minute to respond. Questions may be addressed to both candidates or just one, and questions addressed to just one candidate may also be answered by the other candidate if he would like to respond. Please do not use this as an opportunity to address specific situations of a personal interest to yourself, but rather ask questions of a more general interest regarding the town and the public. We please ask the questioners to refrain from personal comments. Public exchanges such as this one work best if a high level of civility and decorum is observed. Now those members of the audience who would like to ask a question of the candidates, please come up to the microphone and please feel free to form a line so that we can have as much time as possible to answer as many questions as possible, even though we don't have a whole lot of people here. I'm sure you have some questions. First, don't be shy. <laughs> My name is Howard Fox. I live in the Smithfield Village. Uh, I'd just like to know, both of you, what your plans are for economic development to increase the, the tax rates or tax, whatever they call it, uh, to bring in more tax money um, to increase the, the budget in, in the town. Steve, I, I believe you get the first answer here. Sure. Uh, I think there's very little that the town council can do to build economic development in town. Uh, we don't invest in... Target or Walmart, uh, you know, I don't run retail locations. Uh, we have to create a climate where businesses want to come to Centerville. I think we do that by retaining a quality of life and where people want to live, right? I think, uh, I don't think Centerville has got a tax problem. I don't think our taxes are too high. Um, we have got taxes that are very comparable to Chestertown, uh, and our taxes are dramatically lower than Denton. Berlin, Easton, dramatically lower. Salisbury is twice our tax rate. And they have lots of commercial development, way more than I would ever want here in Centerville. So I think it's a function of creating an environment where businesses want to come. And that includes growth out at 304 and 213 in a new enterprise district where we can have a campus-style commercial growth. Jeff, would you like to respond? Yep, I agree with Steve. Um, we, like I said, the comprehensive plan as on the planning commission, I worked on it, and we have that the new, inter, that new corridor out 304 towards 301. Um, try to attract, like I said, that's not the town council. We don't do that, but I would like to see somebody put forth the effort to try to get some businesses out there, and we, like I said, also the business park out to center to on 213. We need some more businesses out there. I mean, that's been sitting vacant, but you also want the right business. You don't want, I, I hate to say it, like a convenience store, because that's, that's not what it's designed for. If you read the comprehensive plan, that's what it says. It's not, it's not designed for a convenience store in that business park. So that's. 
what I would do. Next question. Hi, my name's Sandy Huffer, 11212 Corsica Street. Um, my question is, what are your views on the draft comprehensive plan that suggests that Carter Farm, <coughs> the Carter Farm site, be rezoned as R1 and less than 3.5 dwelling units per unit, which is not in accordance with the State of Maryland smart growth <laughs> policy? Would this down zoning qualify, disqualify the town as a priority funding area and how do you think it may affect the funding for the wastewater treatment improvements? Thank you. Jeff, it's your turn to answer first. Well, the way it's going to affect it is we're not going to get the funding. If, if Carter Farm doesn't get built, the $14,500 $14, doesn't go into the allocation fund. So it, it, it's going to really affect everything. The, um, I don't really, the comprehensive plan, I don't think it's, has it been approved yet? I don't think it's no. been approved yet. So we're still working on it, because I sit on the planning commission, so we're still working on it, so I don't think anything setting, it's set in stone yet on that. Steve? I think the decision to set down zone, the Carter Farm, and all the infill properties is a blunt edge tool when what we need is a scalpel. Uh, I think the Planning Commission is doing a, a nice job or trying to do a nice job of addressing the fact that they want the developments to be flexible in their site plan, but not hyper dense. Uh, and I think we have to figure out a way to do this in such a way where we're not down zoning infill properties, particularly the Carter Farm, I think. Uh, so is it a matter of, you know, the real, if we take that zoning down below 3.5 per acre, that, as you said, is Maryland's smart growth policy, and it would fall out of the priority funding area. There's no question about that. There is some question whether that would affect our ability to get the funding, and that's not a question we've gotten answered yet. I think there's probably a different way to address the Planning Commission's concerns about Carter Farm. Can, can I just take 15 more seconds? Yeah. Um, the the wastewater the, the concern of the planning commission is that this wastewater plant is going to get built. I think I don't speak for them, and then you're going to see this crest, cresting wave of growth, and so the, the natural reaction to that is to apply the brakes, and I think we've got to find maybe a, a slightly different tool to get back to my earlier point about an allocation policy so we get the kind of growth we want where we want it at the density we want it. A minute might not have been quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. My name is Joe Brown. I live in uh, Symphony Village. Um, since we're talking about economic development and taxes, um, it's strange to hear your answers from the candidates. When the commercial base in Centerville is only 17% of our tax base, and the residential is is 83 percent. That's kind of backwards from where uh, most jurisdictions are. Um, I heard people say they were interested in economic development, but I haven't seen the action on that from the council. In fact, Mr. Klein's voted against uh, economic development. Um, we need to clarify, uh, get those numbers rounded about. The burden is all falling on a on a uh, homeowners. We have. The business park. I've been here for 12 years. The only thing we got was Dunkin' Donuts moved from uh, the other side of town to here. So I'd like to hear what, what your uh, response is to getting that tax base uh, under control and more in an equal footing for residential and commercial. Steve, it's your turn to answer first. Sure, I want to clarify. Mr. Brown's talking about the Royal Farms, which I voted against proudly, and I'd vote against it tomorrow as well. I want to be abundantly clear about that. Um, the, I work in Easton, I worked in Washington, D.C. I'm from Baltimore County. You know, I have seen and lived in places with all different kinds of mixes of tax revenue. Some of them are highly corporate taxes or, or uh, commercial taxes. This, was, this is a bedroom community now to other places. People live here and work in other places. That is fundamentally, if you look at our census account, that is what we are. 
So I'm not sure in a bedroom community, and we could talk about whether that's what we want or not, uh, we are going to see a, a reversal of those numbers. I think everybody in the room ought to think about what a reversal of those numbers would look like in Little Centerville to take it so that the, the residential base was 17% and the commercial base made up all the difference, the other 73%. I think we live in a dramatically different town, a fundamentally different town. And to what end? I am not convinced, and it's very difficult to show me any evidence of a town where a, a big wave of commercial growth has reduced the tax burden to anyone. Where have we seen other towns, anywhere near here, make huge investments in commercial growth and then seen the tax rate go down? Because in those places I talked about before that have far more commercial growth than Centerville has, the tax rate is the same or higher. I just don't think this works out that way. Jeff, would you like to respond? Yes. I also voted against the rural farms because I didn't think it was the right fit for where it was going. If it was out along 301, it'd be excellent because it's out on 301, and that's where the people are going to be coming from. Um, I would love to see more businesses in the business park, but I need to, we need the right businesses in the business park. I don't want to, because technically it's a bad intersection, and no matter how you look at it, how many people go in there and how there, but I want, I want the business park to be full. I would like to see it full, but you also, like Steve says, you want to preserve, it's out of town, Technically, it's out of the town, middle of town, so it's not really going to change the middle of town, but it's going to increase traffic on 213. So, like I said, I would like to, but businesses want to have to come here, and I don't know how to attract businesses to come here unless you have more population, and that's not, I don't want to have 20,000 people living in Centerville. I think we should double our population, maybe, if we can, but I don't want to have 20,000 or 25,000 people living in the town of Centerville. That's not, that's not going to be a small town anymore. We have another question from the audience, please. <clears throat> I, I would like to ask Jeff this question. You were previously on the council. Um, I attend a lot of council meetings. And your last term, you seem to be a very inactive role. You sat in most meetings without making any comments. Um, I don't understand why you would go to the council, be on the council, and not participate more fully. But would it be different this time around? I mean, why? I don't know why you were so uh, so quiet in in your prior term. The first term is because it was a learning experience. I've never been in pol in, in in a county government or town government before, and I just said. So people come to me and they say wanted the town to change and they needed certain things. So it was more of a learning experience for me. So I've learned a lot in the two years that I was on the council. So yes, it absolutely would be different. And you, if you see, I never missed a meeting. I missed one meeting because I had shoulder surgery. I was at the rest of them. Yes, I, I was kind of quiet, but I take things in and I learned. So I learned those two years I was on council, I learned a lot of things and I will bring them forward this time. Ready for another question from the audience? No? <laughs> no more questions? I have a question. Excellent. <laughs> I don't live in the town, and unfortunately, we don't have a boat anymore. But when we did, I know at the wharf, there used to be a pump-out station. And maybe there still is, but it was in a it was at, uh, at the up end of the creek, and it was very hard to get to unless you had a little tiny boat. Has any of that changed, or is are there any plans for a more convenient pump out station? I don't know. We can, we'll look into that. I mean, I feel like I'm at a council meeting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to stump anybody. I thought that was going to be easy. No, I. Uh, um, I know that a local nonprofit, Shore Rivers, does some pump out work in other places. I'm not sure if they're on the uh, Corsica or not, but we can look into that for sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to respond? Anybody to else? No. <laughs> um, do you think it's still there, still down that far end? Yeah, I, I, I haven't looked because, yep. I mean, it's. Yeah, um, quick question. Okay. Actually, I asked last time. 
and that is and Mary, I'm, tell us who you are oh I'm Mary Campbell and I live outside Centerville but I drive through Centerville to go to the grocery store all the time and my route takes me past the Carter property and the Carter property is looking better but not great still I mean the fence is all messed up and there are vines growing across the door and the windows and I was just wondering, isn't, isn't there some uh, minimum upkeep that people have to do on their property? We can probably both respond. Go ahead. Well, it's actually, um, it's Steve's turn. Okay. We, we certainly do have minimum uh, for lawn mowing and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, code enforcement has been a, a problematic area for the town to remain staffed in. Uh, because it's a difficult job, right? People don't want to go around writing tickets, so it can be a little a little tougher. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I am equally concerned about the way several properties in Centerville look. We do have a uh, Centerville beautification effort that's happening, led by uh, Councilperson Johnson as well. So, I think we're trying to get some of those things underway, and you know, an investment in code enforcement at, at a much higher rate is something that this council made not that long ago, that decision to do that, to go ahead and move forward with actually hiring uh, someone on a more full-time presence. I actually did code enforcement for four months. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things in the town of Centerville that need to be fixed. And there are standards. The problem is, I don't think they have a system in place to find the property owners. So that's where the problem lies. So you can go to one property 10 times for the same problem. If I'm not going to find them or, or do anything to them, there's nothing going to happen. They're going to, I'm going to keep going back there. And so I do most, think the current council is working on a, a system, correct, Steve? We are. Yes. So, and I do know they have hired a new code enforcement officer because uh, I met her today. So hopefully, We'll get some things, they'll get some things done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another opportunity for a question from the audience. Can I ask a question? Of course. <laughs> I'm not gonna go stand there. I'll just <laughs> stay where I am. I know one of the things that has come up, and I certainly have not been involved and I don't know a lot about it, but it's the cannabis, the growing of the pot. And yes, the growing of the pot. <laughs> and the expansion thereof. Uh, can you talk about that? Uh, Jeff, I think it's your turn to answer first. But well, currently, I don't think they have any plans for expansion. And I also know that GTI is very willing to work with the council and the town on ways to come up to eliminate or not I don't think you'll be able to completely eliminate the odor but knock it down considerably because they're they, they're looking at different filtration systems I do believe and and I know they do grow some outdoor but um, I don't know how much because I haven't been out there to look so I don't know how much outdoor growth they have right now and I know they're trying to limit them to indoor growth so that's the only information I have on it. There's an ordinance in front of the town council right now that would limit their ability to expand in the future. In fact, limit any outdoor agriculture in the business park. Nothing in that ordinance, absolutely nothing in that ordinance whatsoever would make any difference in the current smell of that property. Nothing. It will not control anything that's happening there. It only applies to an expansion. There is no, nothing before the council uh, right now that would tell them they can't grow outside. They're already doing it. It's about an acre and a half. We are in receipt of a letter from their attorney, and they say they have no current. Now, they have right of first refusal on some lots, but they have no current plans to expand. Rather than preemptively finding something we think we don't like, which we could do a lot of in this town, right? We could do a lot of that. Uh, and going and saying, you can't do that in town, I think we ought to wait for them to come forward and see what their plan is to address. Because if you, if you kick them in the teeth, right, there goes the incentive to work with the town to address the issues you have now. They're not going to work with us. And, you know, I'm sitting here, I wear my grandfather's 
ring. He worked for Arundel Cut Concrete for 41 years. My dad worked in a steel mill for 33 years. The best thing we can do, and I went to college, I was the first person in my family to go to college on the backs of blue collar guys. So the last thing I want to do is go into GTI, the biggest non-public employer in town, and say, we'd like you to move somewhere else, which could very easily be their response. We're going to take these 105 jobs, well-paying jobs, that kids might go to college on, that you can make a living on, that you can have a, a healthy quality of life on, and take them somewhere else. The best thing we can do for economic development is not kick people in the teeth that are already here. So if, if they want to expand, we ought to let them bring that plan forward and address it then, not preemptively limit their expansion. Uh, and they are also paying, um, they're paying commercial taxes. They are not paying agricultural taxes on the outdoor growth. It is not zoned agriculture. It's in commercial. The whole PBD is in commercial. Pat Fox, Symphony Village. Um, currently they have 1.7 acres in outdoor grow, and we do smell it, this is budding season. But we also smell it all year long coming out of the buildings because they have no commercial or industrial air scrubbers to clean the air. I think that's a very small ask. And the language in the ordinance that will come before you says indoor in a controlled environment. They don't have a controlled environment. And then it also says no more outdoor. Um, uh, you know, you're going to make far more in taxes to cover all the work we need to do in town on our infrastructure, not grow more debt. You're going to get more in taxes when you have buildings and businesses in that park. That's 45 acres of open land zoned for a business park for commercial, industrial, retail uses. That's what we should be doing. Somebody in town should be working on that. I know in the past we've had part-time ED people, but I kept asking for um, um, uh, updates, if you will, at the Planning Commission, which I've been on for, I think, seven or eight years. We never heard a word. So what were they doing? Now there's nobody, and nobody's doing anything to recruit. We can get businesses into this town. I know what you're saying, Jeff, about you know some businesses, some of the larger ones, or the in the major corporations, they want, for instance, so many people in town, or so many people within a, a mile radius. For instance, my best story is uh, Trader Joe's. If they're looking at a building to move into, they do a demographic study uh, half mile radius around that building, and if you don't have 50% of that population with a four year college degree, they're looking for another site, oop, 15 seconds. Anyway, we should re be, be recruiting more businesses in there and not relying on marijuana grow, and they really need to do something with their building, and I think because any new plans will come to the Planning Commission first, they won't go to you guys, and if there's no restrictions, then we're stuck. Thank you. Steve, it's your turn to answer first. I didn't, I'm not sure I caught a question there. Uh, <laughs> or, yeah. or respond. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, I think, so it is, it's 45 acres. It's mostly under underutilized. There's no question about that. That's why I think, you know, we've got a letter from their attorney that seems to indicate that they are willing to work with us on, on uh, filtration, on everything. And so I'm certainly committed. I I'm not, I'm not going to um, ignore the issue altogether. We smell it from time to time in Centerville Heights, the other part of town, and certainly smell it when we're coming through town. It's, it's difficult to ignore. Uh, I think working with them in a sort of voluntary way without trying to legislate might be a better first step, right? And, and they, can't, they can't even expand what they're doing now in terms of outdoor grow at all without without an exemption, without some policy change. They need a, a, a certification from the Planning Commission. They cannot expand their outdoor, because they got a, a special exemption. F yes. Yeah. So, you know, they, they can't just go do it, right? And they have a, they don't own the, the lots that they may want to expand into. It's simply a right of first refusal. Jeff, do you want to respond? Yes. Like I said earlier, I know that they're working with the town to try to 
come up with new filtration things to limit the smell. Believe me, I smell it at my house. I live on Route 18. I can go out there any day and smell it. I'm in the same boat. It, I, get, I guess I get used to it, just like if you live behind, beside a chicken house. I guess you get used to it. I, I do. Like, I go out now and I don't even smell it. So, but there's other ways. So you said you limit it to out, outdoor growth or indoor growth. So what says they can't build greenhouses out, out in those fields? Like I said, it's got to come before the planning commission anyway, before they do anything in, out there. So, and like you said, they don't have any plans for expansion at this time. But I think there's other ways that they, you can address the problem with it. Many more ways. That's my feelings on it. We have lots more time for questions if anyone has any more questions. All right. Somebody sent a question on the Facebook. Um, I don't know whether you guys want to respond. Yes. Oh, that would be great, yes. You'll have to repeat it since I'm off mic, but what are the plans for the house of Bloomfield Farms? I don't know if that's even in your town jurisdiction. It's not in town jurisdiction. I'll just answer that. So the question was, what are we going to do about the, the house on Bloomfield Farm? Which, for folks that don't know, that's where the White Marsh Park is, just north of Northbrook. Mm -hmm. That is in the county's jurisdiction. No more questions? Well, thank you all, and we will now move to the closing statements by the candidates. Gentlemen, you each have one minute, and we will begin with Steve. Well, thanks again to the league. We appreciate it. Uh, there's not a ton of daylight in the policy of the two guys sitting up here, and I would argue there's probably not a ton of daylight in the three candidates. Uh, if you'd like a, a town council member who is professional and polite, respectful, and can disagree without being disagreeable. I think I'm your guy. Uh, I approach the job with gravity and in a serious way. I've served on the Planning Commission as a liaison for two years and keep an open mind and take a thoughtful approach. And um, as I said at the outset, you know, this will be, this will be my final three-year term if I'm fortunate enough to get reelected. Um, but whoever you vote for, at least turn out and vote on October the 2nd. It's really important. But thank you. And I appreciate the chance to earn your vote. Jeff? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree with Steve. I, I, am, I, I ran for council because I wanted to learn more about the town. And I did learn a, a lot about the town, about how much debt we're in, um, how bad the infrastructure is, how, how many employees we didn't have, that we do now. Um, so I want to carry that forward and continuously grow the town, not, not the town in general, like in growth, but the town um, workforce. I said, we're actually, we're, they, I think the previous council has actually put aside money in the budget to train our employees or their employees so they don't have to outsource things like a, for a water or sewer leak now. They can have people that can control it now. Um, and also, I'd appreciate your vote on October 2nd. Um, like I said, I've learned a lot about the town, and I, I want to continuously try to fix the town in the future. So I'd appreciate your vote on October 2nd, and thank the League of Women Voters again for putting this form on. Thank you, gentlemen. The League of Women Voters of Queen Anne's County would like to thank the candidates for their participation in tonight's forum, the audience, and QAC-TV, and this concludes tonight's forum. Music